Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where we talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Three Pines. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, with the whole Missy situation, we do find out that sadly Missy did die. I was, I knew there was a, it was most likely going to be the case, but I was just hoping, like, it's jacked up to say, but at least a coma or something that she was actually still alive, and that, it, you know, it, it just, it, that family's just going through so much. First Blue and now this, and neither Isabel nor uh, Armand can get in contact with the family, because, right, they're grieving, They and plus they're upset, it's like, right, your inability to, like, keep looking for Blue because Missy felt like there was no one else listening, there was no one else paying attention, and so that ended up forcing her hand in this regard, and just, it just, it, it sucks that things played out this way, but, um, Isabel later on does visit, I'm gonna butcher her name, because when I see it spelled out, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but is it, like, um, Arasawe, um, her and Kara, because because her name could also be Kara, uh, but I'm, I'm going to go with Kara, um, because looking at the pictures of Tommy and Blue, everyone else, like, their, the light, the flash, the flash hit their eyes in a very distinct way, everyone else's except for Tommy's and Blue's, so it almost looks like they were photoshopped into the picture, so it's like, right, the just thing is, like, could they have done that to hide where they actually were, or is this someone else covering their tracks, like, would a killer or anything like that, because that, that's the big question, why, who and why would anyone go through this much trouble to cover up, you know, it'd probably be easier to leave no evidence, but I guess it's like, if you leave evidence behind, you want people to think, like, right, they're okay, they're fine, you know, because obviously one of the people they're kind of throwing out there is potentially Kevin, uh, Tommy's brother, but who knows what that, I mean, they still don't know where Kevin is either, so if they can track him down, maybe they can get some answers about Tommy and Blue, so, because Isabel went to see um, Arisawe and Kara, and she talked about the fact is that Kevin and Tommy's place, they went over there the moment, like, Tommy and uh, Blue went missing, and whatever it is, it looks like they packed in a hurry because uh, Tommy's medication was left there, so it's like, you would think you'd need to take that with you, so either they made sure to get some on the road, or they were so desperate to leave, that, so that's all we really got on that front, just once again, just dr like little drips when it comes to that storyline of where things are kind of going, obviously um, the guilt is getting to I mean, it's just, it just continues to be a tragic situation and just more and more time passes to the point that Armand is having a, a nightmare about Missy. I think it's, I think it speaks volumes that the place they found Mark's body, which we'll get to in a second, that's that he ended up like going there in a dream and that's where Missy was. So it's just kind of like there's, there's layers upon that, but yeah, uh, some of the townsfolk came to burn the place down. I thought it was just because of the whole CC of it all, which there's an element of that, but it's also what that place represents. It's still kind of, I mean, I guess like there are houses that people buy that have histories, you know, complicated things. I mean, there's probably, and you probably go back far enough, you'll probably find some like really jacked up stuff about, especially like very old houses. But it's like, yes, yeah, CC specifically bought that house. I don't know whether it's like the artist in her being like, oh, I'm going to take this terrible, this house that had such a terrible history. Or the argument could be CC was so conceited that she didn't care about the history of that place. Because the place has been shut down since like the 80s and no one's touched it since and it wasn't until, like, Cece was the first person in decades to touch that place. And she bought it last year. So. But, uh, yeah, they came all there to burn it down. I, I mean, I think everyone probably had their own reasons. I I assumed everyone did it because of the CC element of it all. But it's just like, right, the place is an eyesore and just all the stuff. Like, it's obviously associated with the more recent murder, you know, Cece's murder, but also just all the terrible stuff that happened to that school, to all the indigenous children that were at that place, you know? So, but there were a whole bunch of kids there tagging out the place because that was another reason why they were trying to do it because someone was trying to buy it. So they weren't about to let anyone, I guess, like another outsider come in and buy this place. It's like, this place has got bad juju. It sucks. Um, we, it's just a, re a reminder of CC and everything. 
Um, I mean, I, I mean, I guess it makes sense considering like Cece's daughter got arrested and her husband was probably like, probably had no reason to stay in Three Pines anymore. We never really, it was just kind of like a, yeah, they're not there anymore. I mean, why would he stay there considering like, why would he even live in that house considering all the bad memories? So maybe just moved away wherever her, wherever she's being sent to jail at potentially in which them to go, had to go to court. Maybe he got like a, a temporary house or maybe he's missing in a hotel or motel nearby to keep, you know, be within, you know, close enough to her, but also, um, try and figure out what life is going to be. I don't know if we'll get anything else with that. Like the aftermath of that, it's probably going to be much like the center is one of those shows where it's like, you after each season's case, you never got to hear anything else about where the after like where any where things currently were like with like Cora, for example, Jessica Bill's character from this first season. You never like it came up once in reference in season two, I think, but not like oh where things currently are, you know, so on and so forth. So I think the cases are pretty much going to be like that. They're going to be isolated things that you might like wink and nudge to like about like oh yeah, this particular like. When Mark's murder is solved, it's going to be like, yeah, Mark got murdered. That's probably all they'll talk to and, like, bring up the killer. But you'll never get an aftermath. Just, like, I guess, like, the end of the case was just kind of like, right, hopefully they'll give some leniency to Cece's daughter. Um, wasn't her name Cree? Um, try and give her some leniency considering the circumstances and stuff like that. But I, once again, I think that's all we'll really uh, get in that regard. But uh, yeah, poor Mark. Well, we don't know if it's poor Mark because Mark could be a total D-bag, but kicked down the stairs and then eventually bat, had, had his head bashed in by a rock. So um, obviously Armand and them show up to investigate and Armand ends up finding the secret. Well, first and foremost, I love that they ended up running into uh, Yvette. And Yvette was like, oh, I tried to do what the... Um, the chief would want me to do and I try to get inside of the head of like wondering like what it was like for Mark, you know, in the dark. And Armand was like, well, how, what, how was it for him? Agent Nicole. And she's like, dark, sir. And he just lowers his head. I'm like, she's not wrong. She gave me, she, she's not wrong. You know, I, I, I was like, I, I love you. Yvette. I love you so much. Uh, there was even this kind of, awkward moment and she has quite a few throughout the episode she's a little not she she doesn't talk as sensitively about the subjects that kind of come up as she should well because they see something written on the wall and Isabel's like I don't know what it is but it could be this or it could be that and Nicole's like oh uh agent Nicole's like oh why don't you read it and she's like I can't it's like oh I just assume it's like right you don't mean anything ill and ill but it's still kind of you're just you, it's like oh no it's just like I mean, it's the same equivalency as, like, you see an Asian person, like, oh, you read that. It's like, that's Japanese. Oh, right. You know, it's like, I'm trying. It's it's the exact same thing. It's like, right. I'm I'm not from that particular, like, nation of people. So, like, that language is different, you know? I mean, that, I mean that's the thing about languages. They can be so, they, there can be some overlap. But at the same time, it's just like, right, going, you know, once you, you go far enough down south in, in, in a country, you can end up stumbling across a, a completely different dialect, pretty much it's almost its own language. So it ends up being kind of um, exactly like that, which I think that comment cuts even deeper, too, because let's not forget, Isabel was adopted. So she talked to B about it was it episode one or episode two about she not knowing who her people are. So it almost cuts a little deep there, too. I don't know if Isabel kind of whether that. It's always in the back of her mind, but I feel like that comment that, you know, Nicole bringing, like, uh, saying that could have kind of brought, bubbled that to the surface. Like, it, it immediately made me think of it potentially cutting deeper because of, like, the conversation about her not knowing, um, what people she belongs to. Uh, but later on when they, uh, Armand sees the same very same thing that was written on the wall in um on B's arm and she's like right it's just something private so I'm not gonna tell you what it means and I was like she was there that was her who did it and it's like yeah because the place once again did not get shut down into the 80s it's not like a oh man this place uh, hasn't been open since it's like no it was like open like she was she even talks about it later on she was five years old when she was taken from her mom 
And that was the first time she had ever been beaten. When she, instead of like getting a cake, because it was like her, like on her fifth birthday, uh, she got a whipping for the first time. And she actually got locked up in that room that Mark died in. They locked a lot of kids in there to punish them. She said, I got lucky. I was only in there for two days. I thought that was a really powerful conversation that she had with Armand when it came out about like, right, there's the, the legends about the caretaker and it turns out the caretaker that they're in reference to is Mark's dad because he was the caretaker there and it seems like he did some pretty heinous stuff in his time um, at that, uh, at was it a place called St. Anne's? He did some pretty heinous stuff and... Even B is like, yeah, like, I tried to forget him, but I can't. Because I thought that was a powerful part of the conversation, too, of how uh, Amon's like, how can you even stand to be here? Like, wouldn't it be better? To but for her, it's like, no, like, running away just means it, whatever it is that you're trying to run from has that much more of a grip on you. Yes, it's tough, but facing your demons makes you stronger, and she refuses to, like, turn away. She, you know, um, she wants to stand proud and tall and, you know, as someone who survived that place. Um, but the conversation about Mark, Mark wanted to take money to like build a statue for the survivors and B isn't like, like it's all like B saying like, Oh, I like, she's like, we're, Oh, we were supposed to throw him a parade, like celebrate him. It's like, no, all he's doing is alleviating his own guilt. He's making it about him and his guilt. Yes. It's about the survivors, but it's more so about him being the one that's like, look what I'm doing. Look at me, look at me. And it's like, and for her, it's like, Here's another white savior. Like he's just using our pain to make himself look better to alleviate his guilt about what his father did. Yes, it is a thing of yes, his him uh saying like what my father did was terrible and stuff, but for her it's just a thing of we do not need you to speak for us. Like you of Adi, anyone should be the last person to speak for us, considering you are the son of the man who put uh, so many of us through so much trauma because it was like a total of 17 survivors B being one of them uh, about everything that went down in that place. And so I thought that was such an, this powerful thing of like, right, I don't need, we don't need you to be our white savior. We can speak to our, for ourselves because it shouldn't take you, the white savior coming in being like, Hey, here I am. Oh, look what I'm doing. It's like, no, we can speak for ourselves. Our voices should be able to be heard just as much as yours. But it also it's also like, right, you're not also doing this for the most altruistic reasons, you know? Allow us to speak for ourselves. We don't need your anyone else's voices but our own, but especially not yours. Yours in the least we need, you know, so... And that comes from... And obviously it puts B at the top of the suspect list, but I don't think she did it. Um, because it seems like we have a handful of other suspects, uh, because, like, what was it, uh, Peter and Clara ended up inviting every, um, uh, Armand and Jean, it's Jean, uh, Jean Guy, I kept saying, like, Jean Guy, last episode is Jean Guy, um, invited them over for dinner and the other people are other suspects are there because John Guy and Armand found like the traces of gasoline and it's like oh the kids must like the the um, some of the people involved are like oh it must have been the kids so everyone's hiding why they were really up there it's like no we we wanted to check the place out I'm like mm -hmm, sure and but Armand figures it out he's like you guys were there to burn that place to the ground and you just happen to stumble across it and the killer is amongst you whoever it was could not stand looking at uh looking at mark anymore so they decided to kill him that was kind of the whole um point because ruth being i love that she's the most foul mouth character it's like you know uh it's like oh now you're here now we can fucking eat um and it's like oh if you mess anything up in that place i'll fucking sue you i was like i love that she uh i really speaking of ruth really quickly i meant to bring this i want to say last episode uh, she definitely gives me, I mean, the show, as in all, on all in it's all, you can't help but feel like you draw parallels to, like, Twin Peaks. Just, like, this, uh, interesting cast of characters of, like, in, in a whodunit, you never know who was the one who did it. Um, rather than, like, one, well, there is one overarching case, that being the blue situation, but, like, Cece's murder didn't end up being, like, the overarching thing, but, you know. Because Twin Peaks didn't have too many, like, oh, individual cases, it was all connected to a larger thing, right? Uh, but putting that aside, uh, you could also draw parallels between uh, Gamash and uh, Cooper. 
there are definitely like I think parallels you can make between uh, both of them. We ended up finding out that Peter was having an affair with uh, Mark. I thought it was going to end up being Sophie's dad because it's like, oh, we're bet like he kept stressing like, yeah, we're best buds. He's her, her her god Sophie's godfather. He did so much for us. His wife died last year, and I was like, oh, could it like that's I thought they were going to be a thing, which still could be the possibility. Maybe maybe there was something bubbling between them, and then maybe he found out about Mark and Peter, or maybe Sophie did because we found like Sophie has low vision, but we found out she's. You know, uh, she's got like she her hearing's a lot better, and that's what she kind of relies on to compensate for her um, hindered vision. So, so she immediately knew that Armand and Jean Guy went into her room where we do find those bottles, and it's like, so why is she drinking? Like maybe things were kind of bad between her dad and Mark. They're trying to pretend like everything was okay. I mean, and also the way he, like, handles, like, the way he's like, oh, yeah, she's got the scholarship and everything. Uh, it just feels like he kind of kept her on a tight leash and maybe Mark kind of let her have her little bit of her more independence. He was going to let her kind of spread her wings and maybe that led to some dissent between them. Or maybe Sophie found out about Mark and wanted to uh, confront him about him his affair with Peter. It's like, no, no, you're cheating on my dad. You mean the world to my dad. My, maybe she heard like a confession between her dad. and I don't know. So it, it definitely puts her a, a bit of a suspect. I don't believe Peter did it. Uh, we did see him like deciding whether or not he was going to delete the messages. Uh, but I think he, he didn't delete them. I think he just kind of moved them. Uh, but we also don't know whether Clara knows or not. Like whether it's like a thing of Peter told her about it, which I highly doubt it. It does, but that look on her face almost makes you go like, "Does she know?" So that kind of puts her on the suspect list. Uh, there's also uh... right. I I don't think I finished my point that I was trying to make earlier about Twin Peaks. I, I was comparing the the roof to the log lady from Twin Peaks. I don't think I finished that statement earlier, and if I did, well, I'm just reiterating it again because I do love that scene of like her like uh, birthing that that chicken. I'm not chicken, the, the duck egg. I thought that was really that was actually really cute. Uh, but I love that John Gee was like, oh, but them fighting to kind of get out when they're stuck. Uh, that you know gives them the strength to kind of survive, right? And Roof kind of turns and looks, and it kind of turns back. And Armand's like, well, I mean, it means you, uh, if it was stuck, that means you saved its life. Trying to because I think Roof, this might have been the first time she's ever had to deal with like a birth duck or whatever. So she probably didn't know like, oh, I probably should have let them. Now it's like, oh, I kind of hindered you a little bit. I interfered with nature by doing that. Now you might not be as survival, your strong, your instincts to, your strength to survive might not be as high. And you could tell like, kind of like, irk, like not necessarily, not just irked her, but also kind of made her go like, oh damn, I didn't know that. I, I should have, oh, that's what that, okay. I figured uh, the cabin that uh, Ruth had um, let Mark rent out the moment it's like, a, oh, how, how long did he pay for it? It's like, oh, for a couple months. I was like, that has to be where he rendezvous with Peter. And the moment someone broke in, I was like, oh, it has to be Peter. He's trying to get rid of any evidence because he's trying to hide the affair because he doesn't want it to get back to his wife, which once again, he might think she doesn't know, but maybe in actuality she does know, which once again puts her on the top of the suspect list. But that's currently where things kind of stand for me. My, I think... Clara and Sophie are currently at the top of my suspect list. Once again, I don't know if Sophie's drinking has anything to do with all this other stuff, but it does kind of make me... I am suspicious of it, but maybe it's kind of unrelated, or maybe it's unrelated to what I kind of suggested it was about, but it fueled and played a role in her potentially killing Mark if she was the one who did it. So We'll ultimately have to wait and see where all of this ends up taking us, going forward into the next episode. Uh, but really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.